Good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, thank you and welcome to the channel. This is DJ Varium. And this is the second part of my series called Game Changers. So these are the videos with regards to the kind of game changing things that we learn and discover as we go through our producing process and career, the things that take our productions to the next level. So we learn hundreds and thousands of little tiny bits as we go along. But these are the kind of the big things that we learn early on or need to learn early on in order to then kind of work on fine tuning our producing. So today we're talking about side chaining which is a topic that's discussed a lot on, uh, on forums. Um, seems to be a lot of confusion out there with regards to it, especially with the beginners. So let's dive into that. So first of all, side chaining, um, we can replace that word with the word link because that's all a side chain is. It's just a link. It's a link from one thing to another. In the analog world, a side chain is just uh, a cable that goes from one piece of equipment to another uh, and you set a parameter or threshold and basically say on the first machine or you say to the second machine when when the first machine does this I want you to do that so when the vocal gets to a certain level I want you to compress it or add a delay or whatever it is um, so that's all a side chain is. It's just a link. It's not no audio gets sent anywhere with a side chain. It's just a signal that's like now, 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 telling the other thing when to do something. So that's all a side chain is. With regards um, to side chain, and most people tend to talk about about kick and bass. That's the main kind of topic when people talk about side chain, and they talk about sidechain compression and they talk about kick and bass that's just one aspect of sidechaining first of all sidechaining doesn't have to be compression as we've just kind of mentioned uh, you can sidechain to get it to do anything and secondly it's not just about your kick and bass if you're making electronic music any kind of dance music then kick and bass side chaining is quite an important part of that in order generally to make your kick stand out more because the kick and the bass operate in the same kind of frequency range or the main power of each one of those instruments is in the region, the very low regions between kind of 50 and 300 hertz or 200 hertz probably in that range. That's where most of the power of those is. So the two things um, making the same kind of frequencies can make each other sound muddy. And the, the main issue is the bass making the kick sound a bit more muddy. And in wanting that kick to punch through a little bit more, we want the bass to just duck out of the way of it and let it come through a bit more. I don't tend to use a lot of sidechain compression. I tend to use sidechain dynamic EQ. I find that works better. We'll discuss that shortly. But first of all, let's just look up at how we set up a sidechain, a traditional sidechain, kick and bass, sidechain compression. So if we come across to the mixer here, I've got everything else turned off, apart from my kick and my bass, just to save a bit of CPU, to be honest, because this is a project I'm kind of getting towards the end of, and there's a lot of plugins on it. So if I just, if I just play a little bit of it, So that's the general kind of feel of it in this section. So the first thing we need to do is set the actual link, put the, you know, connect the two together with a side chain. So I select the kick and the side chain's already set up on this. It's this faint line that we see here come into the base. The darker ones are audio routing. So where I'm routing the audio from there to my buses, which then route it back to the master channel. We're not here to talk about that, but the side chain set up. If I wanted to set the side chain to something else with the channel selected, the kick, you right click on that arrow, same as if you're routing audio and you select side chain to this track. 
and now it's side chained to that one as well. To get rid of it, just left click on that arrow and it gets rid of it. So side chain, remove, side chain, remove. Pretty straightforward. So side chain's already set up to the base. So I've got a limiter on here already. Now it is a limiter. Um, so you might think, well, I want compression. So I need to put a compressor on there. Uh, the fruity limiter is also a compressor and it's the best one to use for side chain compression if that's what you want to do. So let's just switch that on and bring it up. It's over on this screen. Um, I'm just going to make it very tall because it will help. Um, so there's two modules within this. There's limiting and compression. Just make sure you haven't got the limiter set with the ceiling level really low because it'll then be limiting the signal before it gets to the compressor. And we don't want to be, well, you probably don't want to be limiting anything. You might do a tiny bit of limiting before it hits the compressor, maybe. But let's just ignore that for the time being. You probably don't want that on. So if we come over to the compression and let's just uh, reset. Mm, okay, it's not letting me reset them. Let's just turn these all back to there. Um, so the first thing we need to do, because this is a FL Studio stock plugin, it's made by FL Studio, it's one of their plugins. FL Studio, it can see it can see this link here. It knows that that link is there. Third party plugins won't be able to see that link. It won't know that you've set a side chain up. But FL Studio stock plugins will see it. So you right click on the side chain here and you select the kick. If you've got multiple things routed to that base, they will all be showing up there and you select the one you want. Why well, it's a good idea to have everything named with what it is so yeah select that to kick and now this um unit will see uh will see that side chain so if we just play a little bit of audio there we go that's the audio signal of my bass because this plugin is on my bass so that's my bass so uh, this isn't a tutorial on compression, but we'll briefly kind of go through it. So the threshold here, as you can see, moves down. It's currently above the level of the audio. So with the threshold up there, nothing's going to happen. So the threshold is the level at which the compressor kicks in. So until the audio hits the level of the, com uh, the, level of the threshold, the compressor won't kick in. So we're basically saying when the audio hits that level, turn the compressor on kind of. So we're going to probably want the threshold down here somewhere. The ratio is how much compression you want to apply. So once the, once the threshold is reached, how much do you want to apply? There's no readout here. It'd be nice if there was a readout here, um, but the readout is up in this top corner when you hover over it, like most FL Studio plugins. So I'm going to turn that to about three to one, which is probably don't want anything too aggressive, but about three to one. Um, the attack is how quickly it reacts. So once the audio goes past the threshold, how quickly does it turn on uh, and start compressing? With a kick side chain, I'd probably want it to be fairly quick because a kick drum is fairly instantaneous. It, there's no build up to it. It's just instant. So I want a fairly quick attack time and a really moderate release time. Um, don't want an instant release because then it would almost be uh, sucking and it, would, it wouldn't it would really have time to do anything. It would be because a kick is so quick, it would almost be switching on and off so fast that it would struggle to actually compress anything in that time frame. It would be trying to attack and release pretty much at the same time. So you want a reasonable release time. Uh, on that that's probably about somewhere but you're going to need to play with these and find what's what suits the audio that you're working with so now let's just play that again and the good thing about these fl studio plugins is they're very visual so this is the compression that's happening the amount of compression that's happening and then the purple that we see here that is 
the compressor, that's what the compressor is scooping out of the bass. So they're the frequencies that the compressor is compressing down and minimizing when that kick hits. So everything in between the kick is staying as it is. And if you look closely, if you're on a computer and you can see this a bit bigger, um, you will see that the attack, when it switches on, that's a pretty vertical line there. But the release is gradual. It goes up on an angle because it releases slowly. So, um, so that's the compression. So let's just do a bit of a, let's make it a little bit more aggressive. So it's a bit more noticeable. And then I'll, uh, I'll play the audio and then we'll turn this off and on. It's currently on at the minute. And that's off. And back on. So that's that's a very noticeable difference. Now, with most things, uh, compression, EQ, filtering, maybe not filtering, but with most kind of tool saturation, if 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 the result of doing it is really really noticeable, if the compression is really noticeable, and you don't have to really listen for it, it's instantaneously like oh that's different then you've almost certainly gone too far with it all of these tricks compression saturation eq all that kind of stuff it should always be subtle generally if you're having to use it that hard then the audio in the first place is probably not right and you need to kind of work on getting a better audio in the first place so it would never want to be this this heavy Although for artistic reasons, you might go, actually, that's making the bass kind of pump and be more melodic and more kind of in time with the kick. And actually, I like it. And therefore, if that's what you want, then great. Music is all about art. There are no right and wrong rules. But if you're doing this as more of a cleanup process, like most people are to just make the kick come through a little bit more, then you'd want it to be a lot less, a lot less than that probably somewhere around there let's just have a look at that yeah that's probably about about right so let's just have a listen to that and turn it off and on so now we're off and back on so it's a lot less noticeable still reasonably noticeable i probably would back that off a little bit more maybe just reduce the ratio a tiny bit but now that now we're getting into the intricate details of what sounds right to you and what monitors you're listening on and how your room sounds it will all sound kind of different so this then it all comes down to personal taste and what you want your sound to sound like but that's how you set up a sidechain compressor relatively straightforward and uh, and easy to do so the process that i use it's slightly different. So I'm going to turn off the limiter and I'm going to turn on isotope neutron three advanced. Now I've watched, I've actually already got it kind of set up on here, but like I, like I said, with the FL studio plugin, this plugin, it's a third party plugin and it won't see, it won't see the side chain that I've set up in my mixer. It's got no idea that I've set that up. So you have to actually tell it and you'll have to do this with any, with any uh, third party plugin. So you have to go into the settings, into processing. And when you go into there, these will be like that. Again, you right click and select the kick and you have to turn that on. And now it will see, now it will see that side chain. So the good thing with this plugin is it will actually show you. So if I just play a little bit, just a sec. So you can see these are all my frequencies, naught to 20,000 hertz. Now, when we compressed, 
there are some compressors out there that allow you to put a high pass and a low pass filter on so that you can target which frequencies you want to compress. The stock FL Studio plugin doesn't have that uh, ability, although you could high pass it and low pass it. You could split it to two separate buses, high pass it, low pass it, or use that new frequency splitter to then target and only compress on the one of them. You could do that in a roundabout fashion. But with this, I'm only going to target the frequencies that are uh, where the two sounds are making the same, creating the same frequencies that are clashing with each other. So you can, with this masking feature on here, you can get it to tell you where am I getting masking? Uh, where is it occurring? And as you can imagine, the worst parts are here. The orange where it was showing up on this histogram was, uh, was showing you that masking. Obviously we are getting bits in the higher frequency range, but we're not gonna be too concerned with that because this is about making the kick push through the, the bass. And it's not the high kind of resonant frequencies up here of the kick that we want to hear. It's the low end punch that we wanna push through the bass. So, it's only these frequencies here we need to worry about. So that's when I would then um, put either a bell or maybe a shelf. Sometimes I'll use a shelf and I'll see which one sounds better because anything below this point anyway is kind of irrelevant because you're not going to hear it. But I'd put a bell where it was saying I had that problems and I'd pull it down whilst I'm playing it to see what kind of sounds best. You have to just turn on dynamic and turn on sidechain and select external as an external source because the kick is external to this. And then it will react to the kick as you will see now. So it's pulling them frequencies out when the kick hits. Not sure whether you can hear that, but it's pulling those frequencies out when the kick hits. And I can bring that down as much as I want. I can widen it. Again, it's a bit like adjusting the attack and release times. You play around with it until it sounds how you like it. Now, the effect of this is going to be much more subtle than the compression effect because we're only affecting these frequencies here. We're not affecting any of that. But that's what I want because I don't want to affect the sound of the bit. You know, I will have EQ'd and got my bass to sound it how I want it sound. I don't want to then change the sound of my bass by compressing all of the frequencies in it because it's only about getting the kick to come through that bass and I only need to do that in this area here. So that's how I prefer to do it. More importantly, because like I said before, side chaining, whether it's compression or dynamic EQ, is not just about kick and bass. It's useful in many instances. If you've got anything in your track that's masking something, you know, where one thing is masking something else and you want one thing to be dominant over the other, then compression or sidechain EQ is good at that. You may have a piano that you want the piano to push through all the other leads when it plays. Well, sidechain the piano to the rest of the leads and get it to just duck using EQ to uh to move some of those other frequencies out of the way and you it might be masking in three or four places but just getting using dynamic eq to remove one of those might just help might just lift the piano a little bit the most crucial area that this is useful for where dynamic eq works a lot better massively better than compression is when it comes to vocals and um side chaining the vocals because the vocal it depends on kind of whether you've got Barry White with a really low voice or um, Mariah Carey with a really high voice but generally speaking the vocals are going to be operating kind of in and around kind of three to six thousand hertz in the mid range and what's going to mostly clash with your vocal is your leads most of your leads are probably going to be clashing with that so in order to get the vocal to push through your leads, then sidechain in your vocal to your leads. And if you use a lead bus, you can just sidechain it to the lead bus rather than each individual track, which will also use a lot less CPU 
because Neutron 3 dynamic EQ on a sidechain uses a lot of CPU to do that. So, yeah, sidechain it to the bus and just get those leads to duck out of those frequencies where the vocal is. And that works really, really well. Like I say, you can use it for any, anything else that might be clashing. Um, and you can use compression if that works best for you. And if you don't have access to something where you can do dynamic EQ for the time being. But there's many instances. And like I say, you can use it for artistic things rather than cleaning up audio. So that's the, uh, that's the end of this tutorial. If there's any questions, then leave them in the comments and I'll try and answer those. Be grateful if you like, subscribe to the channel, uh, and I'll keep pushing these tutorials out. Um, hopefully they help a lot of people. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.